Hello, welcome to Bedroom Builds at the From Python to Rust series, episode 12, modules, coming from the previous episode where we spoke about multi-threading. Modules are a collection of functions, types, and even further modules, helping you to organize your source code. Rust has uh, three ways to define them. You can actually define a module inline within the same source code file. Then you also have the choice to just create a separate file. This will then become a module or you create a subdirectory and you can use this as a module. Python only has uh, two ways. So you either create another source code file and uh, import it, or you create a subdirectory with the dunder init.py file existing in there, and then it will be recognized as a module as well. In Rust, everything is private by default. If you wanna have it accessible by other people importing your module, for example, you will have to declare the stuff that you want to share with the pub keyword. In Python, everything is public by design and accessible. So there is actually no way to really um, hide something and make it private. Rust has uh, the use and the mod um, keywords that will help you define modules and also declare what you are using within your code. And Python has the import statement to do the same. A module can become a package or a crate or your set of modules as well. And these you can then share on PyPy or on Rust's uh, Crate.io, for example. I uh, prepared some small code samples. Let's hop over. Looking at this code, you can see that the, the code is not equivalent and doing the same. On the left, we still have, as usual, our Python code. On the right, our Rust code. What the code is doing, though, is equivalent. On the left, in our Python code, we have the import statement, then we import the uh, standard libraries uh, sys, and we rename it with the as keyword to mysys, and then we use it here, for example, mysys exit. And uh, this allows us, if we have like name collisions, to simply rename what we're importing into our code. This can also be done in Rust, as you can see on the right. Instead of import, we use use. Then here we fully qualify the standard IO which uh, means that the standard library with the double colon has an IO module. And this my IO mod module we import using the name SIO. We then use it uh, down here in the return of our main function, so SIO result, and this uh, works out fine. Now on the left in Python, what we can also do is import multiple things from a module into our code. So in this case, we use the OS modules path, but we rename it to only P. And we also take uh, the system function from the OS module, and we can then use them down here. You can see I use p.isdir instead of um, path.isdir. And uh, below I can just use system like that because I imported it into my namespace. Same uh, works in Rust. I use the use keyword again the colons to denote that I am now looking into module, so it will be standard, then the RC module, and as we've learned in the previous episodes, RC is a reference counted pointer. If I don't like to use that because I want to be specific, I can just rename it to ref counted. And I also use the weak one that is found in here. The big difference, you can see you have to use the curly braces if you are importing more than one thing from a module. And of course, obligatory is the semicolon at the end. And we are using this down here. So here I'm not using RC downgrade. I'm using ref counted downgrade or even for the instantiation, I use ref counted new. And this way I get to create my weak pointer here in the code. And what um, is not possible in Python is using fully qualified path um, within your source code. So if I want to use anything from OS, I will have to import OS. So this OS path is file line here will not work on its own if I never use this import OS line. However, here in my Rust code, you can see that uh, here, the standard i32 max value is being used in the code. This works perfectly fine but I have nowhere defined that I'm using the standard i32 module up top in my source code. And the other big difference, here it's only a comment, 
inline module uh, declaration is uh, not possible in Python. Here I have this, this done though. So I created my module mod foo. Then everything that comes in between the curly braces is taking part of my module. Since this is written in the here called the module sodrs uh, file, the main has access to this module. So I can use the foo bar function. And uh, this makes it very flexible to write the uh, code because you can already start with modules within a single source file. And once your module foo grows out of uh, proportion for a single source file, you can move it out into another file or into a directory as we will soon see. Okay, let's hop over to the other code example that I've prepared, which is uh, the main. So let's do that. I will have to first figure out which one is active. This one is. Then we have here our main pi. Now what we can see here is we have the declaration of import foo. Then we have our main function. We print main. We have foo.bar and foo.other stuff is being called. And up here we have the same thing. In our main we declare we declare mod foo, but we don't uh, actually declare all the stuff that is in the module. It will load the foo.rs. So you can see up here in our file structure that this is the foo.rs file. And uh, then we would print the main to denote we are in main. Then we call foo bar and foo other stuff. And uh, this is for the future <laughs> to show you how the private stuff works. Now. On the left in Python, you can see that we I use the foo subdirectory. Let's jump up there and have it uh, open. On the left, we have our foo subdirectory that has the pi cache because uh, when you run it, this will be created. The dunder init dot pi denotes that the foo directory becomes a module. Within this dunder init, you can actually also declare uh, parts of your code. And then you have the other module. And in this other, you can uh, keep structuring your module into further granular stuff, right? And uh, the same is done here on the right, on the Rust side. However, we used the foo.rs to um, load our first module stuff. But to have more subcode within our module, we can actually use a directory and put other.rs. Another way to do this is you can just create the foo directory and rename this foo.rs into subdirectories foo mod.rs. This will be the very same as the foo dunder init does in Python. And uh, this is the main rs that we, that we have open now. Let's quickly look into what foo.rs and other.rs are doing. Foo.rs. Here you can see that I'm declaring mod other. This means the other.rs will be loaded inside the foo directory in this case, because foo is a module. And if you want to load stuff that is part of your module, you will have to create this directory structure. And then the pub use self means that we are speaking about the foo module. Then you have the other submodule of foo, and in there we have another stuff function. And then in our pub function bar, we will print that we've called bar, and we call the other stuff function that we imported from our other module. This means we also have to look into what foo other is containing, and this is now the most simple file. It just contains the definition of our function. Now on the Python side, this is very similar. And edit foo dunder init in here. This is uh, the, the foo init file. So you can see that here. And if we want to import from other, you will have to use the from dot other import other stuff if you want to access only the function that you find in there. And uh, this is equivalent 
to what we have in our Rust code on the right side. Let me jump over and open the foo.rs. On both, we print bar and we call our other stuff function that we imported from the other module. So there's not too much uh, difference between uh, those uh, structures. Let's um, run this main.rs and the main pi. First, Python. Python main.py will give us this output. If we now jump over and run uh, Rust C main RS and then we run our main, we will get the very same output showing us that the main is running, that's calls bar, and then we have two times other stuff in the output because that's what our main function is doing. With this, you can structure your code fairly easily. What you can also do is rename the foo module here into foo mod, which I will do now to illustrate how this works. So if you are in Rust and you have your foo.rs, you can rename it to foo mod rs. And uh, that is true, but we don't care. So now we have the file foo mod rs. And if you go up to our foo structure and open it, you can now see that we have the mod rs, the other rs. This is now the main binary we compiled before. Let's run uh, the compiler again. And you see it does not complain and it runs. And that's just another way of doing it. So if you want to copy exactly the way that you structured code in Python, you create a directory with a under init dot py inside of it to denote that this is a module. You can do the same in Rust by creating a directory and the magic file if you want mod.rs. And uh, if you have submodules in your module, you can then just, in this case it's other, create them inside the directory and this structures your code fairly nicely. Now I've got one more thing to show you. This is about uh, re-exporting stuff. So what Python doesn't really have is um, private and uh, public methods or the, the concept of this. And here you will see a fairly easy to follow example. We created uh, the module family Within the family, you have uh, parents, and then you can call your mom and your brother. And what you can see is the module family is private, but since it's part of this reexports.rs, main still has access to family because it's defined within the same source file. But the submodule parents is just declared as mod parents. It does not have the public keyword, so it's not accessible. And you see here in the third line, we try to now call family parents call brother. And uh, this will fail in the compile. I will show you in a few seconds. And here you can do re-export it. So you can in your private module that users of your crate do not have, ex have access to, define your functions uh, call mom, call brother and then re-export them for use for other people. So all they have to do is import your family module and then they have access to the call brother and call mom function as we demonstrate here in these two lines. Now let's hop over to our compiler output and Rusty compile the re-exports. The compiler complains because the parents module is uh, private and it's very helpful, it tells you even where the parents module is defined. And it uh, suggests you to make it public indirect, indirectly because it tells you it's private. So one fix to make this compile is of course to attach here the pub keyword. But since the designer of the family module 
wants to keep this private and has the reg exports for us um the actual fix is to not call it this way but uh, this way let's quickly fix the code and now it compiles as you can see let's rerun the compiler from a clear screen you could argue that you have more control in Rust over how your library will be used and can be used because you have the concept of everything being private by default. So in this case of the family module, you can decide to have the parents module be private and not let people access what is in there. And you can re-export it for them for ease of use. So instead of having this long qualifier family parents called brother, you can export it for them like this, or you can hide implementation details in your private module that nobody ever will get to see and only export your public interface to your functions helping you structure your code even further. I hope this uh, short introduction into modules was helpful. Thanks for watching. Coming up next at the From Python to Rust series is async.